Christy Curry, the head coach there at Alabama, her 11th season. Phenomenal job yesterday helping this group get to 6-0. I was really happy for Coach. A big win yesterday for their program. First time beating a top 25 team since 2021. And uh, I'm sure they're uh, still playing off the high from that uh, going into this game. Coach Lisa Fortier on the other side. Number five in the NCAA win percentage with a ridiculous 798 clip. A tip off controlled by the Bulldogs. We are underway for the Merrill Center. As we mentioned, the Trong sisters, somebody to keep an eye on for sure. This is Kay Lynn, who's more of a floor general. Top 20 in the NCAA in assists. Kay Lee Trong wears number 11. Her first touch. Yvonne Ejim, somebody to watch in the low post. She scores the first two points of the day. And Gonzaga, all five starters, average in double digits. This is Sarah Ashley Barker speaking of transfers. The Georgia transfer comes over and starts up the scoring for Alabama. You know, and I was really impressed with Barker yesterday. She had to find her points in different ways. Louisville defended her very physical. And uh, she ended up with 18 points, seven rebounds, and two steals. She never weighed her. Boy, Kay Leitron will not hesitate. She has been ridiculous in this tournament. Let's talk about their experience. They have four graduate students in the starting lineup and one true senior in Egypt. Uh, scoring big and their experience. That's a great combination. And, Coach, we talked with that Coach Lisa Fortier earlier this week. She said they thought they could have won that game, but in the end just couldn't quite get it done. Yes, they were really bummed about that. They, they felt they had their chances and just didn't pull it out. They've been fired up ever since, and, and they've played like it. Yvonne Ejim faces up for two more. I'll tell you what, she is extremely versatile. Here's Jessica Timmons, the player we spotlighted. Walk down to five. Cody loses the handle. And that sends Cody coughed it up, gets Zach on the break. Egypt. Offensive rebound for Gonzaga. Oh my, that was from Curry Range. <laughs> Kay Lindstrom brings it up. Filling it in front of the hometown crowd early on here. Talk about the boost that having a big contingency of fans will give you. Tons of relatives and friends in the stands today. Parker can't get it to roll. Well, I said Cody can't handle it. You know with Gonzaga, not only are they a veteran team, but they're a veteran team that's been together. They don't have a, a bunch of they don't have a bunch of portal kids. This group has played together for a long time. Here's a look at the three from Trump. That's ridiculous. That's out near the midcourt line. Caitlin Clark range. Strong with a big time start. Her first triple of the day. Alabama coming off the NCAA tournament run a year ago. Gonzaga has made 14 of the last 15 NCAA tournaments under Coach Fortier. Delton and Berger Williams turns the ball over. This is her first appearance of the tournament. And on the run, Kaylee Trong is found. First foul by Alabama. Crimson Tide, a narrow victory over number 20 Louisville, 78 to 73 yesterday. They're in trouble to start as Kay Leitron makes it a 10 point game. Carly Weathers, an unfriendly bounce. Sarah Ashley Parker resets. The defense there for Gonzaga as Eliza Hollingsworth turns it away. Ejim turns down the jumper. Such a disciplined Gonzaga attack. Seventeen and one in the West Coast Conference last year. Seven to shoot for Egypt. Maxwell. Brianna Maxwell makes it a 13-point game.
And Garrett Gonzaga is red hot. To your point, they're shooting 75% from the field, at, whereas Alabama shooting 11% and 0 for 5 from 3. Jessica Timmons gets the roll. Haley Trong works her way in for Gonzaga. Rating her own shot, but she's 0 for her last two. Crimson Tide trying to trim it back down to a single-digit game. Boyle McQueen, one of the veterans of this group. Can't hit the runner. And it's one of the new additions to the roster, Essence Cody. Fruit in the class of 2023. Gets the offensive rebound off the miss. Jessica Timmons. Oh, the pretty shot off the window. Now he Stokes gives it up. Nine with the steal. Malia on the run. Timmons. And Alabama on the other side, one of the best defensive teams in the country. They came into this tournament number one in scoring defense, allowing under 43 a game. Absolutely. Uh, they were impressive yesterday against Louisville. The Trong made, uh, you don't see a lot of college players able to make that read. Yvonne Ejim is also a senior. And a Maxwell graduate in her own right. So is Eliza Hollingsworth. So you can see why some of that experience is coming through. They have played a ton of college basketball and done most of it together. Yes, I'd be curious to know if there's another college team that starts four graduate fifth-year players and one true senior and a group that's played together for most of that time with the exception of Maxwell transferring in from Utah. Oh, another one of those transfers. Hybens coming over from Syracuse. They will knock it down. Gonzaga three of its first seven from outside the start. Ali and I. Cody. For Alabama off the bench yesterday. Three of four from the three-point line. Three rebounds. Coach Christy Curry told us early in the week, this freshman class is growing up before our eyes. Says they're doing what they haven't had to do before in recent practices. They're going to need them to contribute if they're going to take down an awesome Gonzaga team. Probably leads by 11. Final minute and change of this first quarter. Merrill Center in Katy, Texas. Now he will. Rolls it off. Stokes a player that they're excited about. She picked up an all-freshman on her last season. Brilliant starts of this game up by 13. Nye banks it in. Trump takes the clock down to under eight. Stokes with three. Callie has to heave. Oh, nearly got it from the long distance shot. An offensive board, and Hollingsworth makes good. Wow, way to stay with it. Great old board by Hollingsworth. One second left. Timmons. One a quarter on both sides of the ball for Gonzaga. Strong with the triple. Egypt steps outside. All Zags after one in a 12-point game. Only coach in this program's history with nine or more 20-win seasons. We talked about this a little bit yesterday. Gonzaga gets a lot of recognition for what the men's program has done over the past decade or so. But this women's program has been really just as good in the past several seasons in the regular campaign. Now, on the other side, Christy Curry told us, look, we've managed expectations. We've lived up to the hype through the first five or so games of the season. It's time for us to be tested. So far, so good for Alabama. An undefeated start. Zach has given them a very tough challenge today, but the Crimson Tide have turned up the interior defense. That is a total Egypt able to hit. Way to stay with it. An unusual miss initially there down low by Egypt. Great seal. That was a design play on the baseline out of bounds. High low to Egypt. Seven early points for Egypt. You know, we haven't talked a lot about Gonzaga's defense, but they defend. Uh, they work hard. That's the thing that stands out to me, their intensity and their work ethic. Strong able to reverse. Largest lead of the day for Gonzaga. Strong. Boy, she never had... 
but Alabama's got to string together some stops and then obviously put the ball in the basket. Barker. We get settled in the game yesterday and the win over Louisville. Well, credit to Louisville. I thought they were really physical with her and, and guarded her really hard. Oh, a 19-point game outside of Houston. Garrett Jones, the former head coach. Marlene Stonks here with you as Burger Williams gets it. Well, first of all, nicely designed play coming out of the timeout. After timeout play, getting a, a layup there. Nice job by Alabama. You know, Alabama came into the game as the number one scoring defense in the nation, holding their opponents to just 42 points a game. And Gonzaga could possibly hit that here in just the first half. Uh, I'll tell you what, I don't think too many teams have. Obviously, South Carolina has been impressive early on with their offensive explosion. Well, they won 101 to 19 yesterday. Complete domination of the Mississippi Valley State. One of the best teams in this country that Alabama will have to face later this year. Oh, what a finish! At the point guard position, they're very, very good at that. Cody snatches the offensive rebound. Tremendous upside. Talked to Coach Curry a little bit about her yesterday. I thought she was crucial at certain key points in the game yesterday. Again, strong. Tried to no look. Patrick Mahomes style pass. That one wouldn't quite work. One of the few times she's late with a pass. McQueen with a nice move. I'll tell you, Coach Portier has to love this group. A trunk for a trunk. Weathers turned it over. Giveaway number five for Alabama, and McQueen gets it right back. There we go. Alabama needs some more of that. Great heads-up play by McQueen. Gonzaga got a little loosey-goosey there, inbound in the ball. Esther Little has made her first appearance for Gonzaga. Runner drops. Seven points for her. Final 90 seconds of this first half. Nine. Alabama just a paltry one of 11 from three point. Strong. What a find. Oh my. Comes Alabama with the shot clock off. McQueen. Travel. Crimson Tide just 30% from the field today. One of 11 from outside. They've given it away seven times. Another advantage I think Gonzaga has is, you know, with the portal, it's a lot more difficult to have consistency and continuity within your team. You're bringing in new players on and off throughout the year. Again, Gonzaga hasn't done that so much. They've got a lot of continuity. Strong and will get it off. Bella's shot to go before the break. Alabama just one of 11 from three-point land. Do you think it's more of Gonzaga's forced them into bad shots, or do you expect those fall, shots to start to fall here in the second half? Well, they, some of those should start to fall. They are getting some, some decent looks, but they're also getting some quick catch-and-shoot looks um, that are a little bit rushed. Uh, again, credit to Gonzaga's defense. Uh, Lee and I in Alabama trying to claw back into this game. The Trunk Sisters with an outpouring of support playing back in their hometown of Houston. At least nearby, about 30 minutes away in Katy. Wow, a fading triple. Maxwell continues to shoulder the load. She's got 12. I'll tell you what, they look so comfortable out there. They're shooting fadeaways, throwing behind the back passes. I mean, they look like a pro team out here right now. Mark it as a long two. Zach's going to steal. And there they are again defensively. This is strong into the front court. Egypt with a nice first half and she keeps it rolling here in the second 11 points for her I tell you what Gonzaga can come at you from so many different ways uh, They can go high low to Egypt as they did right there They can come down and transition catch and shoot to three they can face up a drive they're outstanding uh, They have outstanding court vision and great movement without the ball McQueen Alabama just one of 12 from deep Stolen away by Trump. Gonzaga's defense again. 
Tay Lee Trong able to reverse. Tay Lynn. Long rebound to Timmons. Nine. Swiped away by Egypt. You know, I was talking earlier about how hard Gonzaga works on the defensive end of the floor. Right there's a prime example. Alabama thinks they have a wide open lane. They don't put enough zip on that pass. And Egypt flies in there and takes it away. At the extra year, they've certainly taken advantage of it. Harley Weathers trying to get Alabama back into the game. To shoot. The Zags just not giving Alabama anything easy. Williams with three. Parker Williams. Great skip pass. Draw can't hit. Egypt again cleans it up. See the rebounding battle. Very close overall, but Egypt has been a factor today. Parker Williams again off the glass. And Gonzaga's right back at you. Three Alabama players had not crossed half court, and Tron was already past half court there, coming right back after the make. Look at that effort from Tron. It works as hard as any team I've seen early on here um, in the season. Williams again. Christy Curry said, we feel really good about our reinforcements. Unfortunately, it's just been a total domination from Gonzaga. Unfortunately for their case, I should say. Burger Williams, the transfer from Indiana State. Sarah Ashley Barker. Ice cold to start this game. Williams again. Maxwell. A rare miss, and Carly Weathers scraps the rebound. Sarah Ashley Barker with a soft touch. Nice little transition bucket. Cleanest look she's had all game. Here's Sarah Ashley Parker on the steal. Timmons lays it in. Six to shoot. As it's Cody. Fields the board. Zaggins missed 13 threes today, but it hasn't mattered because they've taken so many areas of the game so well today. Yeah, so many other areas that they're outstanding in that that's not really been a factor. Buckle foul hard. Again, that not you can't necessarily teach. Team points per game coming in. Struggling today, but Started her career at Georgia, transferred to Alabama. Birmingham native trying to will her team back into this game. They do get an offensive rebound off the free throw miss. Well, McQueen. Hydens commits the foul. And Zaga wanted a real neutral site test in this tournament. For the past two decades or so, they've won 22 straight at home. And credit to Coach Fortier and her staff for going on the road, playing in a tough tournament like this one, to really challenge her young women, to prepare them, ultimately and essentially for March. Meg Newman, five points off the bench yesterday. Wow, what a great steal by Trump. That's Gonzaga's basketball. Great hands by Trong there. Just a heads up play. I love her grit. <laughs> yeah, her high school coach, Tamara Collier, did too. Had a chance to talk with her earlier this week. She's now at Cinco Ranch right here in Katy after helping this group to get to 33 and 3 their senior year. She said, a funny story, Kaylee actually moved to the post as a senior after three years as the point guard. Said she was smart enough to do it all. Speaking of post, Egypt able to lay it in. And Gonzaga has the lead back to 21. Complete dominance by the Bulldogs. Phenomenal quickness there to the basket. Wow, she looks like a guard. 58 to 37.
We're headed to the fourth in game number two today at the Barrel Center. 21 point spread. The Bulldogs coach have just put on a clinic today in this 21 point game. They really have. Uh, and they played just so fundamental, such fundamental basketball. It, it, they're really enjoyable to watch. This is Kaylee Trong. A rare miss. She leads Alabama with 11 points off the bench. A group that came in averaging over 20 per contest in the second unit. Better ones in the SEC. Five points off two of seven shooting. No, a great chance for Alabama to make a run here. Gonzaga's really cooled off. Douglas. One's off the side of the backboard. Essence Cody is fouled. And since Cody said it was really important to get to play in this tournament, Christy Curry did because they wanted to continue to further their recruiting. Uh, both these schools, regional to both of those areas, recruited at a very high level. And Zach has found an archetype for them to fit into nicely. Hybins for Egypt. Uh, Hybins can't hit. Alabama outscoring Gonzaga 20 to 15 overall in this second half. And definitely a chance for Alabama to get cut it to 10 here while Gonzaga has gone ice cold. Rachel Douglas fouled. And one of the members of that prize recruiting class going to the free throw line, the true freshman out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Down to a 10-point game, and there's plenty of time left if you can get it to that point. Now Rachel Douglas, she said really this team in general, but Rachel Douglas specifically is just a joy to coach. Said they barely scratched the surface on what they can be, and that's really saying something when you're coming off a career-best 22 points yesterday. Rest Ejim through maybe the media here and get her back in. Hyman's with the lay -in. Second of four games on tap for the Merrill Center. Arkansas Pine Bluff and Mississippi State up next. Weather slips it in. Great body control to split two defenders and finish that. That was a tough shot. And if you weren't with us for the first half, it's Zaka completely dominated. Went to the break with a 43 to 21 lead. A 7-0 burst in the third has helped them slip away in the second quarter. They outscored Alabama 20 to 10 in that frame today. They put up 27 against Liberty yesterday. A 102 to 59 romp. Alabama's last game of this tournament will be Liberty tomorrow. An offensive foul. Alabama as a unit, just two of 15 from outside. Maxwell. Wow, what a dip. She fakes going towards the screen. Nice little pull-up jumper. Egypt actually has 19 for Gonzaga, but Maxwell with a strong effort in her own right. Ali. Rare mistake there for Maxwell. Alabama trying to cash in. McQueen gets fouled. For moments, Mississippi State taking an Arkansas Pine Bluff. Very good conference featuring South Carolina. Oh my, it's a tough conference, obviously, year in and year out. I like Alabama's team this year. Didn't know this, but we mentioned there was no elimination style, so they're not moving forward with the winner or loser's bracket. But he said there are trophies. For the winners of the tournament, if somebody goes 3-0, and they're getting a trophy. If somebody else wins the other side of the bracket, they're getting a trophy. And Zaka trying to add another one to their case. And a loaded field this weekend at the Betty Chancellor Classic. I tell you what, I certainly wouldn't want to face Gonzaga tomorrow. If I'm Louisville, that's a tough task. That's going to be interesting to see how the Cardinals start this game. So we're talking between, they've started really slow in this tournament. 
Leah Nye fouled on a three. Gonzaga's got to fill them from the tip tomorrow. Leah Nye, the great season last year. Her three shots end up two out of three. Hallie Stokes has done a lot of good things for Gonzaga today. Another big rebound. Six points and seven boards. Something that really stands out to me about Gonzaga here late in the game is they had a little lull there. Coach 48 calls a timeout and just how they responded. Definitely a mark of a veteran group. Vaughn Ejim. Able to crack the 20. Explosive. Deceptively quick. Gonzaga's led by as many as 29. Essence Cody sticks with it. This is valuable experience for underclassmen as Ejim shows her veteran points. So definitely that bode well for Cody come SEC tournament time and NCAA tournament time. No doubt. She's definitely growing up before our eyes here. Alabama getting to the first round last year. Egypt. What more can she in which she can score? And there are a lot of them. Season high, 23 points for her. I think the committee that's in charge of the Becky Hammond. She's done pioneering the women's game, especially on the sidelines. Turned to being a head coach in recent years. Egypt. Really the biggest thing that stands out when you look at the numbers in this game, the Crimson Tide just three out of 17 from deep. They did not get a three-pointer from Sarah Ashley Barker today. Again, credit to Gonzaga. I thought their defensive physicality, intensity, their work ethic defensively really stood out early in this game. Parker Williams with the steal. Shot clock and game clock about six seconds apart in this final minute. Cody. Oh, showing you the range. See if Alabama fouls here. Strong works it in. It looks like as long as they can get out of a precarious spot, Gonzaga will just dribble it out. Well, nice effort in the second half by Alabama. Outscoring Gonzaga 37 to 25. But in the end, a brilliant effort from the Bulldogs. They go wire to wire nearly and will take a 10 point win over an SEC foe. Coach Songs, your final thoughts on this game? I continue to be extremely impressed by Gonzaga. Again, I think they're a top 25 team, and I'm looking forward to the matchup tomorrow against Louisville out of the ACC. It certainly will be our big ticket game of the day. Coach Lisa Fortier and company get the win by a final of 68 to 58. For our awesome team in the truck and my broadcast partner, Marlene Stallings, I hear Joe saying so long, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. We got another one coming up your way as Mississippi State takes on Arkansas Pine Bluff in approximately 30 minutes. We'll see you then. Thanks so much for watching.